Good morning. Bonjour et bienvenue à St. Andrews. My name is Nancy Johnson, and I want to offer a very warm welcome to all of those of you who are here in person and all of those of you who are joining us online. C'est très bien d'être ensemble encore une fois ce matin. We're grateful to again be able to gather this morning for worship on the unceded lands of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people who cared for this land long before our church was built. As usual, many activities are taking place at St. Andrews. If you don't receive the weekly bulletin and would like to, you may reach out to the church office to receive that. Our amazing bazaar is next Saturday from 1 to 3.30. Uh, you will find crafts, attic treasures, books, linens, jewelry, all kinds of things. And when you're ready for a break, the handbell choir is going to be playing uh, in the sanctuary. Of course, there's a delicious tea in St. Andrew's Hall, and the Women's Guild is still looking for baking if you can help. And you can bring that baking in right up until Saturday. Uh, thank you to all those who contributed items for the bazaar, and in particular for the gift back baskets. If you are still planning to bring something in for the bazaar, could you please do it by Wednesday of this week? As you know, the bazaar is led by the Women's Guild, but it's truly a congregational effort to support it, and we hope to see you there. We get to have fun, and we also get to contribute to our local mission partners with some of the proceeds. A reminder that only cash or checks are acceptable for the items you purchase. Now, beginning next Sunday, we're having our White Gift Sunday uh, for Cambridge Street Public School. Now, this school, it goes from kindergarten to grade six. The children come from Vietnam, China, the Middle East, Africa, South America, and parts in between. We can contribute to this by purchasing books that are on the wish list. They're on the website, but they're also listed out in uh, Grant Hall and you wrap the book in white paper and bring it to church. Uh, next Sunday is when the principal will be here. So if you wish to donate a gift certificate to a bookstore or funds, please deliver them to the church office. This is a long tradition at St. Andrews and I remember it from the time I was a small child. It was very exciting. Uh, one quick note about a location change. If you were thinking of going to the Multi-Faith Housing Initiative Interfaith Celebration at Lansdowne Park, it's to raise awareness for housing, homelessness, and, af and the affordable housing crisis in Ottawa. It is now at Lansdowne Park at the Horticulture Building. And now Reverend Heather Payton has uh, an item she wishes to share with us. I um, wanted to let you know, uh, keep you up to date about our nursery changes. So you may have noticed that there has been some changeover and some moving of items and tidying up of things in the offices um, down the hall. And uh, we, so we are moving the nursery upstairs to make it more welcoming for young families, to make it easier, more easily accessible to come uh, into the sanctuary and out and to have an adult bathroom right uh, there for them. So that is in process and a lot of people have been working hard on that with thanks to them. Uh, we are not fully set up there just yet. Um, so aside from today, we are continuing to use that downstairs nursery until this one is fully up to date. However, today, this we're temporarily using the nursery, giving it a try, the new nursery up here. So for today, if you have children who are um, not able to come to Sunday school, not quite old enough, um, like three or four is when we kind of start in Sunday school programming. And you can come up here to the nursery off of Grant Hall for today. And then until we are all up to date, we'll have, you'll still be downstairs and we'll have a grand reopening of our, our new nursery at that time. And we will keep you posted. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. For those of you here this morning, as usual, we will be having coffee and tea and cookies after the service through these doors to my right, and you can do some Christmas shopping at the fair trade table. Now, would you please rise for the entry of the scriptures and the singing of the first psalm, which is four one, first hymn, which is 416 in the blue hymn book.
Good morning and welcome in the name of Jesus Christ, whose body we are called to be in this time and place. As we come together, it is God who gathers us here, calling us to follow Jesus and his ways, empowering us and enlivening us in the Holy Spirit. All this, that we might be gathered into a community that prays for each other and the world, that lives and works in the love of God. Come, let us worship together this morning. Please be seated. Let's pray. Holy God, we have come and you are here. And we are gathered now as your family, seeking your presence, praying that we might feel your peace surround us and your mercy and love working through us. We have come. 
and you are here, and we bring with us our faith and our doubt, our hope and our fear. We come with our questions, seeking to know what is right from what is wrong, to know what is loving from what is not. We have come, and you are here, and so we confess that too often when faced with choices between one way and another, we have chosen what matters most of all to us and done so without thought to you or others. In words spoken or unspoken, deeds done or left undone, our, words have be our worlds have become small, centered on ourselves. And we come this morning asking that you would forgive us, that you would heal our vision and our hearts, that you would surprise us once again with joy, opening us up to the possibilities found in the hope we have because we live in communion with you, each other, and this whole world. We pray these things as we come now in the name of Jesus, praying as he himself teaches us and saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the good news that in Jesus Christ, God has come into the world to show us what love is and what the love of God looks like. In him we have discovered the beauty, the truth, and grace that is God's own self, and the good news that there is nothing in this world or the world to come, neither death nor life, that can keep us from the love of God in Jesus Christ, truly, in his name, we are forgiven, healed, made new. Thanks be to God.
The children are invited to come forward. So I've brought a few things today, and I want you to, I'm going to ask you if you think this is something that is easy for you to use, or hard for you to use, or sort of in between. So if it's easy, I want you to give a thumbs up. If it's hard, I want you to give a thumbs down. And if it's in the middle, or if you're not really sure, you uh, give me a in between okay so the first thing I got here today is a soccer ball is it easy for you to use a, a soccer ball some have thumbs up some have thumbs in the middle some I see with one thumb down yeah all right I've got some markers is this easy for you to use I see a thumbs up, but some side, sideways and some down. We make nice, colorful pictures with colored markers or colored pens. All right, and this last thing I've got are two things together, a mixing bowl and a spoon. Is this something that's easy for you to use? Oh, we've got a few more thumbs down and some sideways. A couple of thumbs up for that. Mm-hmm. Different people like to use these things, in, and it's different for everyone. Some find them easy to use, some find them hard to use, and sometimes it's in the middle. And I wonder if you have ever used any of these three things to help somebody else. I wonder if you've ever done that. Maybe you have... Yeah, we've got some hands up for that. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've made a beautiful picture or a card to give to someone and that made their day. Or maybe you made someone a cookie with, and helped or spent some time making things, baking or cooking to share with someone else. Or maybe you played soccer with somebody who needed something to do to make them uh, to share friendship or to share things with them. God helps us to do these things that sometimes are easy and sometimes are hard. And sometimes God asks us to do things that are hard for us to help us uh, share God's love with other people. And sometimes it's easy for us to share God's love with other people by doing the things that we love. Uh, and God, when we pray and when we can work together, we can share God's love to even more people and help others know that God loves them. So remember that whether you think it was easy or hard or in between, God can use you and the things that you are good at to share God's love. We'll pray now. I'll say a line and you can say it after me. Dear God, thank you for helping us when it's hard and when it's easy to share your love. Thank you for loving us. Amen. We go down this way to Sunday school today.
Good morning, my name is Terry. Today, our scripture reading is from Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 to 30, which can be found in the Pew Bible in front of you on page 27 of the New Testament. As we listen for God's word today, please pray with me. Prepare our hearts, O God, by the power of your spirit, to hear your word and obey your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For it is if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed me over two talents. See, I have made two more talents. <coughs> His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You are a wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? then you ought to have invested my money (laughs) with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
felt the way I felt at the end of that reading, which wasn't an easy one. And then we say, this is the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. It's a parable. It's therefore not something that necessarily happened or was true. It's a story Jesus told that he threw alongside, well, that's parable. I tell you this all the time, right? Parable us threw alongside our own situations and our own living as a way to look again at what's happening around us and think about our own relationships, our own way of living, what really matters. And I tell you this because the parables of the last few weeks have sometimes been challenging just to get past with some of the images of violence in them, the language of slavery, and this one which someone described as if there, if there was a capitalist manifesto. It's, it's a hard one. It's a hard one. And so as I think about parables and their invitation to us to consider what are the things that really matter, well, let me tell you this story, and then we'll come back to the scriptures. In the pandemic, one of the things that I started doing more was attending online workshops and webinars. They were kind of fun. And there was one I attended with Heather, not Reverend Heather, but Heather Clerk of Session Heather. Some of our best people are Heathers. And we attended a workshop, and it was designed for church leadership and thinking about... Um, navigating the future and at one point they put us in small groups with the most fascinating exercise to engage in we were given scenarios for ministry and then we had to pretend we were in a church council situation debating the proposal and in the first round we were invited to think of all the ways we could say no. Our task was to say no to this. And it wasn't, well, it wasn't very difficult. I think it was something like opening up your church grounds or basement to create a skate park for the, the youth in the neighborhood. And it was really not hard to come up with reasons to say no. I mean, there's insurance, there's safety, there's we don't know these kids. I mean, we were falling all over ourselves. We could shut that one down pretty quickly. Saying no wasn't difficult. The next round, we had to say yes. And we had to say more than yes to the situation we were given. We had to say yes, and here's what I can do to help make that happen. Okay, that was harder. The same barriers that had risen up before us in the first situation were there, but if we were saying yes, we had to think our way through them. So it was harder. But as Heather said so wisely, it felt so much better. Because by pausing and working our way through and thinking how we could say yes, we could feel possibilities open up and things change. And I tell you this story partly because, well, partly because it has stayed with me, but when I come to the parable this morning and the question of what we do with what we have arises in front of us, well, if parables are about inviting us to think about what matters, there's something that matters in stories like this. Let me say mattering matters. Have you ever thought about what, what it just means to say something matters in the first place? If something matters, you know, if you have a sense that you yourself matter, it probably has something to do with a sense of belonging or a sense of self-esteem. But more than that, when someone or something matters, there's a sense of it being valued. In practical terms, for a, a human being to, to matter is to feel that you are, not just that you are valued, 
but that the things you do add value to what's going on around you. Does that make sense? That you are not just feeling valued, but that you can add value. And when you feel like that, then you have a sense that you matter, right? And that makes a difference. In, in practical terms, it, it makes a big difference in terms of despair, burnout, all kinds of things. It matters that you feel you matter. And as we come to our parable today, I think it is something about that that leaves me and probably many of you feeling more than sympathy for that third servant, the one who hides his, his, the, the gift that the master entrusts him with and, and is condemned for it. It's, it's such a challenging story. Not at first. The first two servants are praised for doubling what they've given the master. And the master generously gives them more and says, enter into my joy, which in, in some ways is like making them almost equal with the master. They're lifted up beyond their servant status. But the third one, the third one who has cautiously hidden the talent he was given, tries to explain to the one who gave it to him why. I was afraid, he said. I was afraid because I know you to be harsh and unjust. And, I, and that's, well... Well, we have many questions about that, right? We've just seen the master anything but with the other two servants. But we don't know what this, we don't know what this third person's experience in the world is like, what, what's going on in his life. But, but he genuinely is afraid. I don't know if it's about afraid to take a risk. Is he afraid that to try in case he fails? This one talent servant <laughs> is hindered by fear. Maybe he doesn't have enough, he thinks. I, I don't know. But he's afraid. And because he's afraid, he holds close what he has, and he hides it under the ground, away from the light. And when he does that, my parable is pretty violent, but you could sum it up by he loses everything. Usually, Jesus tells parables and speaks in ways that attack wealth and pride. And, and this, this seems so odd, doesn't it? And yet, for those of us who sometimes feel overwhelmed... <laughs> who sometimes feel like the one talent person living in a world where people have more. It's, it's almost terrifying. So two things to consider that I can offer you as we look at this. One is that talent is an interesting word. In today's language, it tends to mean your strength, your ability, what you're good at. Oh, things that matter <laughs> to you. In Jesus' day, it was a chunk of metal or coins. And do you know what they were worth? They were worth almost 15 years' worth of wages. So one talent isn't a little, it's a lot. Something to think about. And the other thing to think about is we think about why it mattered to Jesus that he shared this story is to think about where he was when he told the story. He is coming to the end of his time with his disciples on this earth. This is almost the very end of his last big teaching. He is on the side of the Mount of Olives looking out over the city of Jerusalem and you can almost feel the shadow of that city and the cross coming across him. 
there's so much opposition now to his message of his kingdom. His days are numbered, and surely what he says in moments like this must matter. Standing on that hillside with the, the shadows of the day, reaching out across to him, I wonder, I wonder if he and the disciples thought back to that other hillside where he began his teaching so many years before, where he had gathered the disciples just after he called them, where he had spoken to them the words of God's blessing. We call them the Beatitudes, the promise that in God's kingdom there is honor and worth for those that are not shown honor and worth in this world. And the teachings that followed that had to do with loving even your enemy and if you had more than you need, sharing it with others and, and, and that were maybe summed up best by that let your light shine before others, don't hide it. And as the, the shadow reaches across to Jesus and his disciples on that final time of his teaching, so too does the light of the earlier teaching meet it there. And, and between the, the pain of the, the moment they're in, and the hope and joy of the kingdom that Jesus has been proclaiming, there is something full of life for all of us, I think. Last week, I, I talked to you about a podcast. I'm, I'm going to refer to it again a little bit this week. It, it has stayed with me. I think because it was, um, it shared the experience of someone who is seeking to shine light in dark, in places that might otherwise be thought of as dark. It was the interview with the climate activist um, Christina Figueres, and and her words that I shared with you last week had to do with. Well, I talked to you about what she said about fear and how too often um, we respond to fear by ignoring what's causing us pain or fleeing it or even arguing. I can almost hear that in that, oh, but you're, you know, the blaming. And, and, and her invitation was to think about how you can acknowledge the pain that you feel and somehow standing in that find a way to fuel the gift of hope. If we continue to listen to what she said, and I have sent this podcast to those of you who asked, so you can ask me and I'll send it to you. She, she talked about how in her own book, about, which is about climate change, there are only something like 15 pages that dwell on the horrible things and the, the dire situation the planet is in now. She said the rest of the book, she found it important to stand in that pain and then point to, to hope, to all the things that we sometimes don't see when we're mired in what's going wrong and only talking about what, well, all those things that make us feel like there's not much we can do and that our own actions are of little worth. She talks about the almost exponential possibilities of things like wind power and solar power she talks about, about hope into a world where there's a great deal of very real pain and challenge. And she invites us to think in terms of generosity rather than scarcity, multiplying what we have rather than focusing on the limitations. So that's why I told you that story about saying yes and saying no. <laughs> When we have all these limitations in front of us, it can be very easy to turn down opportunities and say no to things. But as we work through them, we discover what we do have when we seek for ways to say yes. And perhaps like the servant who 
who buried what he had under the ground, when we bring it to light, we find that there is enough there to offer to others to slowly opportunity and to see a light that started with you begin to shine and grow. So last week I said, you know, someone said to me, what are you going to do with this parable? And I said, oh, no, the real question is, what are you going to do with it? (laughs) That's still the answer. Because the, the real answer to the question that I pose in the sermon title this week, what really matters, is you. You matter to God. You matter to the purposes of God, to the purposes of Jesus, to the the work and life that he is seeking even now to bring and move among us. So if you have something to think about as you go this week, it's the, the choices we make when opportunities are put before us, the Willingness to be open to something new that breaks beyond our own sense of perceived limits. If someone asks you to do something and you feel it's impossible because you feel like you're just a one-talent person, stop a moment and think. If saying yes is going to help people reclaim hope, if it's going to build new relationships that are meaningful and life-giving, if it's going to enfold people in a sense that they matter and you're going to discover that you have something of value to give to them, if it's going to bring attention to something as simple and gorgeous as beauty, then don't say no too quickly. Think about yes. Pray a lot. (laughs) Consider what you can do to make it happen. Because we can all make a difference in that way. This is what I hear Jesus encouraging us to think about. When things feel difficult, and even painful. And there are so many limits out there. He raises up to us what we do have to offer. He reminds us that we are valued in God's sight with value to offer in the world, to let our light shine, not hide it under a bushel. I wonder if he's really coming back to the Sermon on the Mount on this mountain as well. Friends, hope matters. The mission of God at work in this world, it matters. And in the midst of that, you matter. (laughs) We matter. We really do. Let your life shine.
continue our worship in prayer. Let's pray together. We come this morning, God, because you have promised to meet us here. And so we have come, and you are here, and we have heard, and now we prepare to go out into the world this week giving thanks. We come praising you for the gift of your Son, who came and lived in such a way that in all he did and said, he offered blessing to others. He gave even his life for us. And in that we discovered the great truth, that your love was so great that even death couldn't keep you from us. And so we give you thanks for the gift of you with us and him in our midst and all that gives us hope and joy, things we can never buy. We praise you this morning that your spirit works through us. We thank you for the way that through your word and your spirit you call us out, that you urge us to action, that you call us your beloved and give us the gifts we need for the work you give us. How steadfast your presence is among us. How faithful your promises are. How wonderful that you will always be our God. Full of your promises and your love, we bring you our prayers. We pray this morning, God, for your church, for the congregation here and for the communities that gather in your name around this world this day. We are grateful for the freedom we have here, and we pray for those who gather in places of pain and violence and persecution. We pray, living God, that the work of your church might be blessed and that Together, our members will walk and encourage each other in love that shares the light of your hope. Knowing that justice and peace are close to your heart, we remember before you all those people who live in pain, those who do not have what they need for life, those who seek food for themselves and their families, those who risk their own safety, those who do not have a place to call home. We pray for those who live in places of war and violence. We pray for peace when the day that strife shall end. Down through the ages, you have taught us to pray for the welfare of the land in which we find ourselves, and so we lift up to you our prayers for our own city and neighborhoods, our province and our country. We commend our leaders and our citizens to your care and, and your wisdom. We pray that in our common purpose, we might all be guided by concern for others. We remember before you those who are ill, and we claim your promises of healing for them. We pray for comfort for those who are nearing the end of their life. And we pray for comfort for those who have lost loved ones. In silence, we bring you our own prayers. And in trusting all who we care for and care about to you, we pray as well for ourselves. That as we go out into your world this week, we might be strengthened 
to love one another as you love us. Teach us to see the possibilities that are before us that share hope. Be with us that we might walk together in the light of your peace and love, holding that light out for others. In the name of Jesus, amen. Friends, our God is the giver of every good and perfect gift. And we, we are called to share the gifts of joy and gladness we have with others. We bring our offering here in the congregation not to earn God's favor, but as a response of thanksgiving for the blessings in our own lives and out of a desire to share them. The ushers will move through you during the offertory music and um, there are, if you're looking for an envelope, there are some in the pews. If you give electronically and you want to indicate your support, th there's a card you can put in the plate. There is in the bulletin the means to access the website if electronic giving is what you prefer. And for those of you at home, there's links on the screen as well. However we give, we give with joy, we give with thanksgiving, and we give because we are blessed and called to be a blessing ourselves.
our gifts, God, and we ask that you would bless these to your service, bless the ministries of this congregation, and bless us that our light might shine. In the name of Jesus, amen. have come and now it is time to go. Know this, that as we go out into the world this week, the God who greeted us and brought us here goes before us, behind us, and with us each day. Go in the knowledge of God's presence. Let your light shine before others, and that you may do this. May the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be yours now and always. And together we say, Amen. Amen.